Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. In today's video, I've got something a little bit different as I'm going up against the clock. I'm going to see if I can build and paint this Airfix starter set in just one hour. So, with 60 minutes on the timer, let's get started. So when I started this, my idea was to get all of the parts removal out of the way so I wasn't going back and forth between tools and could focus on just getting things put together. Although this did stop me swapping back and forth between glue, knife and clippers, I think I lost just as much time searching for pieces amongst those I'd clipped off as I didn't really sort things in my haste to get all the pieces I needed. The only parts I left on the sprues were the retracted undercarriage that I wasn't going to use, and the rear horizontal stabilizers, which are indicated as mid-grey both sides, so I thought I'd paint them on the sprue and attach them afterwards. With just under 8 minutes gone, at this point I was feeling quietly confident. I started cleaning parts up, but then changed my mind since I would need to paint the cockpit before closing the fuselage. As such, I got the cockpit tub and cemented the seat and rudder pedal assembly in. As this was the first time I'd ever made this kit, I wasn't used to its idiosyncrasies, and it took me about three minutes to work out the correct alignment for the control column and get that seated. This minor setback aside, I glued together the drop tank, and put the main exhaust insert into the starboard fuselage, and then followed up with a cockpit tub. Putting that aside, I decided to get the spinner glued up, though I did waste some time working out which way round it was seated. That all done, it was back to the cockpit and the instrument panel. This sort of slots into place and feels like it brings a lot of rigidity to that area of the cockpit fuselage assembly. With only a quarter of my time gone, I felt I was still in a comfortable position and messed about with the fit of the cannon in the wings for a bit before moving on to the wing inserts for the ejection chutes. The first of these seated perfectly, the second took a little more coaxing into place. I then drilled out the holes for the upper wing fairings and managed in my clumsiness to break the lower wing assembly in the process. After a quick examination, I concluded this wasn't terminal and soldiered on. Adding in the central exhaust stack to the lower wing, I then went on to fitting the cannon. This was fiddly, but relatively straightforward. Though it did need a bit of reference to the instructions to ensure I was seating them correctly. I then fitted one of the wings and checked back to ensure I wasn't messing things up, before adding the other. 
Fortunately, my clumsiness hadn't done anything irreparable. With the main wing assemblies now complete, I added the upper wing fairings, and I started to feel that I hadn't made as much progress as I thought I would. I needed to get the cockpit painted, so I gave the interior a good overall coat of RM74, and also did the wheel wells and the front engine piece. I blasted these with the hairdryer to speed up the drying process, after which I was halfway through my time. I moved on to the front engine and prop assembly, cleaning these up and cementing the cooling fan on the prop, and then this to the fuselage piece. I really needed to get on with the main assembly, and for that I needed to get the instrument decals on. So I had these soaking whilst I made the drop tank rack assembly. by which time the decals were ready to go on the panel. With the instrument decals on, I could close up the fuselage halves, as I was rapidly running out of time. Fitting these together needed some cleaning of the joining edges, and I found the instrument panel needed a little trimming for a good fit, probably because I was rushing on the original fitment. Cementing the fuselage together, I found I hadn't trimmed the lower joining gates properly, so needed to shave these off for a good fit. The rudder went on next, and then the main wing assembly, and time seemed to be accelerating away as I was rapidly approaching the three quarters mark. Attaching the wings also knocked the rudder off, but I just left that for later. Next up was the front engine assembly to help with holding the rather fragile front of the fuselage together. This was followed by the engine cowling, which went on with no issues. But fitting the machine gun section of the fuselage was a bit more tricky, and I spent a couple of minutes that I really couldn't afford at this point, getting it to sit properly. The rudder was then popped back on. And then I addressed the pilot's back armour and brace.
which left me with just 10 minutes to finish. I sprayed RLM 76 over the lower surfaces and the fuselage sides. and quickly blasted this with the hairdryer. I used the instruction sheet to crudely mask off the fuselage sides and sprayed RLM-75 on the fuselage and wing tops. And both sides of the rear horizontal stabilizers. Again, I used the hairdryer as I was down to just five minutes now. With RLM-74 in the airbrush, I freehanded the camouflage on the aircraft. Leaving me just a minute to attach the horizontal stabilizers. In the last 30 seconds, I hurriedly managed to hand paint the spinner with matte black, and I was out of time. So that's the result of the self-imposed one hour challenge. I suppose I did technically build and paint the kit, but then I also didn't finish building it. It has no transparencies, for instance, some areas aren't painted, and it also has no decals. Now, I can see there are definitely some areas where I could have been more efficient with my time in retrospect, for example, I should have ignored the drop tank assembly, gone for the undercarriage up option, and forgone the decals in the cockpit. That would have allowed me to just build the entire kit before painting. I also think if I'd laid out the parts more methodically when cutting off the sprues, that would have saved a few minutes too. Overall though, while it's technically possible to build a model in an hour, it's definitely not recommended. It is surprisingly stressful pitting yourself against the clock in this way, which leads to mistakes that eat up time that compound the issue. The end result is definitely going to be disappointing, and it's not the reason we actually model. So overall, it's a really bad idea for any other reason than demonstrating that, or as a personal challenge. Now before I go, let me send a huge thank you to the over 8,500 of you who are currently subscribed, and to my amazing patrons and channel members. A big shout out to Pete, he was the first winner of my monthly membership giveaway of the Mighty Sight Glasses. The March giveaway is the Airfix Vintage Classic Commonwealth Boomerang Kit, and any members or patrons subscribed in March will also receive double entry tickets for membership in the April giveaway, which is the Mammoth 132nd scale Revell Eurofighter Typhoon. Entry into these giveaways is automatic for any level of membership on Patreon or YouTube, so if you fancy yourself with a chance of winning, plus access to my private Discord group, some behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, and extra videos and merch, get yourself signed up. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, I really would appreciate it if you did. As with most channels, most viewers aren't subscribed, but it's free and really helps me out. So go on, give it a click. Now last week I did say I was hoping to get my final Spitfire build video out by now, but I encountered a small snag, which has pushed that out to next week, but it's definitely coming out then. It just needed this one last piece that I needed to deal with before I could get it uploaded, so look out for the premiere of that coming next Wednesday, where you can watch along with me and ask whatever questions you have, so I really hope you'll join me there. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous, then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.